Detecting strikes when you're nymphing can be really challenging, and the strikes can be so subtle. So how the heck do you know when you're supposed to set the hook? Is it sight? Is it feel? Is it intuition? Hey everybody, thanks for joining White Dog Outdoors. Spring has sprung here in the Northeast, and hopefully it's springing where you are too, and there's lots of opportunities to get out and have some fun on the stream, so hopefully you're doing that. While I'm out on the stream today, I wanted to tackle a topic that comes up a lot. Um, and that is strike detection. And specifically, you know, should I feel those strikes more or should I see those strikes more? There are a lot of things out there that can make or break a day when you're on the water. And strike detection is definitely one of them. It can either be a really incredible day because you're connecting with lots of fish or it could be a really heartbreaking day when you miss the hook set on a fish of a lifetime. So, you know, I think with today's video, I'm hoping we give you some information to help you be able to have those more successful days and not so many heartbreaking days. So you've probably seen on our channel, we already have some strike detection videos. Um, volume five of our urine nymphing series goes into detail on what a strike looks like um, and those different ways in which we're sensing strikes. And so if you haven't seen that, I definitely recommend you go check out volume five. I'll pop that up right here so you guys can go check that one out. But I go through a lot of video of, of watching the cider and where I'm seeing and where I'm feeling those strikes. So those are some very nuanced details that if you really wanna start seeing what they look like, go check out that video. Now the topic of strike detection is specifically the sight versus feel. I feel like can be a little bit of a contentious topic. Uh, you certainly see a lot of discussion around it. And you'll see a lot of people that say that they're looking to feel the strike, or you're seeing a lot of people that are saying, hey, if you're not, feel, if you're not seeing the strike, then you're missing a lot of fish. And, I think those statements one way or the other may have some truth in them, but don't put everything into whether or not you should be seeing or whether or not you should be feeling. The bottom line is it's a combination of the two, okay? And we're gonna go through a bunch of different situations in which you might see a strike more than feel a strike or which you might feel a strike more than see a strike. So even in my own videos, um, in my early videos, I kind of misspoke a little bit. And um, I said that I, I do feel a lot of my strikes and I say that I feel a lot of my strikes, but at the same time, I didn't say that I also see a lot of my strikes. And what I said was that I feel 90% of my strikes. It's 90% feel and 10% sight, which is quite honestly wrong. Um, that's not what it was. And I, the math does not need to add up to 100. It's not that you're either seeing or you're feeling. It's always a combination of the two. So even though I might feel a lot of my strikes, 80 to 90%, I'm also seeing a lot of my strikes, 80 to 90%, and maybe even a little bit higher. So it is definitely a combination of the two, and one doesn't mean you're not getting the other. So there are a few factors that go into whether or not you're going to see a strike or, or feel a strike one more than the other. And it essentially comes down to how tight of a line do you have from the tip of your rod all the way down to your flies. Essentially, if you have a tighter line from the tip of your rod down to your flies, basically you're keeping a direct connection between those flies, you are certainly more likely to feel those strikes. It doesn't mean you won't see them, because a lot of times you will, but in those situations where you have a direct connection between the tip of your rod and those flies, you are likely to feel exactly what's going on with those flies. And then in situations where you don't have that direct connection between the rod tip of your rod to your flies, you are certainly more likely to be able to see the movements within your leader than feel those things. If you don't have a direct connection between the tip of your rod and those flies, you're not likely to feel it anywhere near as much. In my previous videos, I have said that a lot of times I am keeping a direct connection between the tip of my rod and my flies. And I am a lot of times, but it's not all the time. In fact, there are a lot of situations in which you don't want to have a direct connection as much between the tip of your rod and your flies. So let's talk about those different types of situations and where we would feel things maybe more than see things or see things maybe more than feel things. So one of the main components of whether or not you're gonna have a direct connection from the tip of your rod to those flies is how far away are you fishing from the, the tip of your rod. If I'm basically fishing directly underneath the tip of my rod, I'm most likely gonna be keeping a pretty tight line on those flies because there's not much distance between the tip of the rod and those flies. And I'm probably guiding those flies with the, with the tip of my rod as it's coming down through the drift. So I'm, I'm definitely likely to feel a take when there's not much line out and I have, and that, and that line is basically directly under the, the tip of my fly rod. 
as I start to move further out the stream and get further away from the tip of my rod, I am now introducing more of an angle into the water of my cider. And so the more angle I have, the more sag I'm gonna have, and the more likely I'm gonna be able to see the minute movements within the currents and the takes of the fish. So the further those flies drift from the tip of my rod, the further they are away from me, the more likely I'm gonna be able to see things. And so the closer I am to me, the more I'm probably gonna feel things. The further away from me I am, the more I'm probably gonna start seeing things than feeling things. All right, another factor that affects the contact that I have between the tip of my rod and my flies is the weight of my flies. And the weight of your flies is gonna be dictated by the type of water you're on, the depth of water, how fast that water is. Let's start on the heavier end, right? So today I was out, I was fishing lighter flies because I was on water that was, was suitable for those lighter flies. I got to a little bit heavier water. It was a little bit deeper, more pocket water. I definitely needed to be able to plunge down into the deeper water, um, counteract that fast water and get down into the slower water quicker. And so I needed heavier flies. As soon as I put on those heavier flies, I am in much more contact with my flies than when I had lighter flies. Okay, so the more weight there is, the more resistance in those flies you have in the water, the more you're gonna be able to feel things and even potentially at a distance. Earlier in the day, I was on slower water. It was shallower water. I was going with just a couple of smaller, lighter flies and I am 100% not keeping a tight line, as tight a line, as I would with heavier flies. If I were to try to keep a tight line on light flies, I'm going to be affecting my drift and I don't wanna do that. I wanna let those flies drift naturally in the currents and if I try to keep a tight line on that, I'm gonna be pulling them through the currents and into different seams and it's not going to be a natural drift. In order for me to get that natural drift in slower water, shallower water, I'm gonna go with lighter flies and I'm going to not keep as tight a line and I'm gonna be watching really, really carefully for anything that shows me, like my leader jumping, pausing, moving, anything like that that's gonna tell me that I have a strike. So, the lighter the flies I'm using, the less direct contact to those flies I'm gonna have, and the more I'm gonna rely on sight. The heavier flies I have, the more direct contact I'm gonna have between the tip of my rod and those flies, and I'm certainly gonna feel my flies more than I would with lighter flies, but I'm also gonna be really, really watching my leader as it's going downstream. All right, some other factors um, that would affect your ability to keep a direct line from your tip of your rod to your flies, wind. Um, as soon as I've introduced any wind, and I had it today, I'm trying to fish both heavy and light flies, and that wind is coming downstream and it's putting a bow in my line and in those types of situations, if I keep trying to pull my line, I'm just gonna pull my flies out of the drift that I want. And so I'm gonna basically, I'm gonna keep my rod a little bit lower, but I'm gonna have my line going in at an angle and it's gonna be, the wind's gonna create a little bit of a bow in the line. And that bow actually is pretty cool when you get a strike because that's gonna tighten up and it's gonna, it's, that bow is gonna go from curve to flat. And that's gonna be a really great way to detect a strike. So anytime you have wind, I think it certainly introduces a little more likelihood that if you're controlling your cider appropriately, that you'll be able to see those strikes. All right, and one other piece is, hey, sometimes I'm not gonna see or feel anything, and I might rely on some other clue as to whether or not a fish took my fly. And I kind of go back to an experience I had on a local stream where I connected with probably one of the biggest fish, certainly the biggest fish I've ever seen out of that stream. It was a 21 inch, beautiful, beautiful brown. I didn't feel and I didn't see my line move, okay? What I saw was the fish was actually pretty close to me in a deep pocket. I actually saw a flash from the fish underneath the water, but I set the hook and because I got a really good hook set, I was able to land a really, really beautiful fish uncharacteristic to any fish in this particular stream because I was clued in. I was paying attention, not just to the cider, not just to the feel of the rod, but where my flies were. And I saw something under the water that told me that something moved from my flies and I set the hook and connected with the fish. One other thing that I would bring up is that there's a lot of different types of leaders that people use out there, all the way from really heavy leaders. If you're a beginner, it's a little easier to cast 
all the way down to microliters for people who are more experienced and can cast flies on lighter lines. I would highly suggest that you work your way toward those microliters, away from the heavier liters toward those microliters because of a few reasons. It is going to heighten both the, the, the sensation you get through the rod, so feel, and it's also going to heighten the things that you can see in your cider materials. As long as your cider material is thick enough for you to be able to see it, the lighter microliters are gonna have, they're gonna be influenced more by the currents. You're gonna be able to see more minute movements. Um, there's not gonna be so much weight in your line when you're fishing at distance, and so you're really gonna be able to see things a lot better, and it's gonna transition that into the tip of your rod as well for you to be able to feel things. So, you know, when I started off, you know, a lot of people started off in like the 20, 25 pound leader range, um, I'm down to usually about eight pound um, maxima on my leader and then probably five or six X on my actually tippet. Um, and I certainly feel if you can get comfortable casting those lighter micro leaders, I would highly suggest it because you will have a lot more feel and you'll be able to see a lot more um, in your leader as you're fishing. All right, here's the moral of the story. <laughs> Strike detection can be feel more than sight. It can be sight more than feel, and it could be neither. You could see something else that clues you into whether or not something happened with your flies. The bottom line is the most important thing you can do is be in tune. Be in tune with what you feel through your rod. Be in tune with what you're seeing with your leader. Be in tune to what's happening in the water in the area that your flies are in, okay? You, if you can get into that groove, and that's what I love about urinifying so much, I think, is that I just get into a groove. I get into my casting groove. I get into my getting good drifts groove, and I'm so tuned in on what's happening with my rod, what's happening with my line, am I seeing anything else, that it's just so rewarding when things come together and you're expecting that strike and it happens. God, that's so awesome. So the best thing I can tell you is just be always be paying attention, always be in tune with what's happening, and hopefully you guys will connect more and more and you won't miss those big fish and you'll have more incredible days than you will have frustrating days. And that's my goal. I just hope you guys get out there and have a lot of fun. All right, I hope you guys have a great season. I hope the tips in these videos certainly help you guys and help you be more successful to have more incredible days than heartbreaking days. But uh, I'm gonna leave you guys there for now. There's a really cool run right behind me, a nice little deep pocket with a down tree. I'm going to go drift some flies through that and see if we can connect. I've caught some nice fish there before. Hopefully we will again. And uh, hey, guys, have a great season. We'll see you soon.